Hello, I'm Jez Cutler and I work for a company called Travis Perkins in the UK. A little bit about Travis Perkins. Travis Perkins PLC is a large FTSE company in the UK. It's got a turnover of about £5 billion sterling. 2,000 operating sites, 18, perhaps 18, 19 different businesses. So we decided to measure our supply chain sustainability impacts because really for, for three reasons. Because we recognise that, that supply chain management is very much the new frontier. It is very much where the new opportunities are happening around the environment space. Um, moreover, we're getting worried about resilient sourcing. We're actually getting worried about where our products are going to come from. And we believe one of the solutions to that is resource efficiency. We believe that the potential within our own supply chain for much better resource efficiency really isn't being realised. We are certain it's the right thing to do from, a, from an environmental operational perspective, but also from a commercial perspective. It just makes business sense to start looking into our supply chain and start understanding where the risks and where the opportunities are. We commissioned Vital Metrics to do a more comprehensive spend analysis, um, which we got out then recently, the results around carbon, energy, waste and water. Um, it is a data-rich environment that, that you need to create to make this uh, spend analysis work. You need to, to get that information into the system you, you need to engage a lot of people. And certainly in my organisation, you need to engage a lot of people. Um, and, and, and once you do, and once they understand what it is that you're trying to achieve, actually there's a high degree of interest, so getting their buy-in is quite easy. So the results that we got were quite surprising. Um, the, the purchase analysis was, was really, really good at showing us, um, with some clarity, where we should be concentrating on our efforts. We now know that 96% of our footprint comes from the supply chain, comes from our trading activities rather than our direct operations, rather than all the trucks, all the buildings that, that we operate and that we run 365 days a year. They feel big, but in, 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 in reality, they're a small part of our total impact. Surprisingly, we learned that there's a large large concentration of impact in a very, very small amount of that supply chain. Multiple impacts from a limited number of product categories and suppliers, is, and, and that's fascinating, absolutely fascinating to us. It, it's great to have that information quantified so that we can go and challenge, we can go and work collaboratively with, with those sectors. So, what's next for us? Well, plan next steps. We, we were very clear at the outset that, 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 that there was a governance process to, to, to our engagement in this whole thing. Um, and we were very clear that we, we needed to, uh, to socialise, to publicise the findings that, 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 this, that this process got us to. Um, to start sharing with the wider world that it's a big, big footprint that, that trading companies have that needs to be addressed, needs to be managed, needs to be acted on. We're keen and we're interested and we want to show some leadership in this space. It's not possible to uh, keep ignoring supply chain impact and just concentrate on your scope one and scope two. It's no longer, um, uh, it's no longer responsible to, 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 to act in that way. So we're going to do that um, and we're also, as I mentioned already, we're also going to keep collecting and we're also going to keep improving on the data. We're going to keep measuring it, we're going to keep collecting information and we're going to keep understanding and we're going to keep digging. We can't um, leave it at disclosure, that's not enough for us.